ऑनरेबल मनीष शंकर साहब कुतुबुर रहमान साहब एंड फेलो एलिग्स एज यू अवे Aligarh Muslim University started as the MAO college the founding father aspired it to be the best and visited various universities of england to find out what makes them tick what makes them such great institutions he wanted to make aligarh muslim university the oxford of the muslim world to further his intention he imported a large number of british educationists and the best minds the east and the islamic world could produce the product of aligarh muslim university were proudly called aligs they were not only graduates but they were complete individuals by that i mean they had inculcated and imbibed aligarh tehzeeb which is the most important thing a student of aligarh imbibes therefore at aligarh muslim university we aim not only to produce graduates but we aim to produce aligs what is an alig it is a unique blend of aligarh tehzeeb and modern scientific education in the 1930s aligarh muslim university had caught up with the west our university can proudly claim to have produced heads of state of four different countries we have produced great scholars scientists soldiers academicians and of course letters uh uh artists as uh, you name it an aligarh muslim university has produced the best post partition unfortunately the decline of aligarh muslim university started we lost good teachers and the pressures of population forced the aligarh muslim university administration to keep admitting more and more and more students till today aligarh is bursting in its seams with 28000 students and mind you these are quartered in accommodation meant for only 6000 students so you can imagine the great rush the congestion in aligarh muslim university when i took over the vice chancellor about 18 months ago i found that aligarh muslim university bore little resemblance of the great days of the past our heritage buildings were crumbling the university had been closed signed i for very very long periods there was rampant student and teacher indiscipline amu had become a university not of choice but as an institution of the last resort if a student could not find admission anywhere else 
then only he tried for AMU. There was acute overcrowding, poor food, a menu which had remained unchanged for a hundred years, lack of sporting facilities. We just had two basketball and volleyball courts, although we did boast of a riding club, but its horses were aged and hardly fit for riding. The enormity of the situation forced me to examine why this had happened. And following in the footsteps of Sir Sayyid, I went to see what great universities are about. And what I saw in America, and what I had seen earlier in the United Kingdom, and what I see now in the Arab world. It made me realize that we were 50 years behind time. And if we did not take corrective action immediately, Aligarh Muslim University would be, or its survival, would be in very grave danger. So again, we are in the catch-up syndrome. As I said, we are 50 years behind time of the modern universities. We not only intend to catch up, but inshallah, beat the best universities of the world in time. We want to follow the example of Ibn Majid, who, whose trustees or his, his uh, cartographic maps were followed by Vasco da Gama and Columbus. The, I recently visited the education city in Qatar and I was most impressed by what I saw in the Cornell Medical College. I also remembered that during my visit there, Avicenna's Al Qanun or the Canon was the basic medical book taught in Western universities. AMU has had close links with the Gulf region. Unfortunately, for the last 15 years or 20 years or so, we have allowed this relationship to weaken. But inshallah, it will be my efforts to re-establish the close bonds our universities had with the Gulf region. <coughs> I have already formulated Vision 2020 for Aligarh Muslim University. We intend that by 2020, when we will be completing or celebrating our centenary, Aligarh Muslim University will again be an intellectual powerhouse. What are the basic ingredients of becoming an intellectual powerhouse? First, is restore and preserve the Ali spirit. The first I'll talk about Tazeeb. It is a unique blend of Indo-Islamic culture. It is not limited to Sherwani wearing, Biryani or Sher o Shari. It is an all-encompassing pluralism, God oriented secularism, freedom of thought, and commitment to humanity and to the millet. We plan to collect every piece of writing of Sir Sayyid, which a lot have forgotten about, and publish a multi 
volume compendium by the time we celebrate our centenary. We want to revitalize the Tezabul Ikhlaq. This was a magazine started by Sir Sayyid, but now unfor unfortunately is a pale shadow of its former self. We have taken some major initiatives. The first was starting with the food. As I said, the menu had remained unchanged for a hundred years. The first thing we've done is we modernize the kitchens so that our students get wholesome food. Those of you who, or most of you, who were students of Aligarh and had eaten the Dunlop, let me tell you, Dunlop is now history. <laughs> We've installed modern cooking systems, automatic chapati makers. So, but we are not going to forget Danla. We are going to have it once a week only. The next problem was decongesting our hostels. I have already told you that accommodation which was meant for 6,000 students was occupied by 15,000. It was almost like a slum and a slum breeds only slum dwellers. So we need to correct that and immediately. <laughs> Fortunately, we had invited Mrs. Sonia Gandhi for our convocation. Unfortunately, she could not visit the university, but we did get a grant of 150 crores. <laughs> we are going to utilize this money to immediately in the next one and a half years construct two, ha two halls of residence, 1,500 1, girls and 1,000 boys. These will be accommodated. We will be able to space out, decrease the congestion in our halls of residence. Also, we want to get all the girls who are accommodated in various halls outside the university into the main campus. We also want to create an international hall for foreign students and we are not forgetting our NRI students. I do realize your problems. I do realize that your children are staying all over Aligarh, but inshallah we will cater for their problems. The next was our policy of games at your doorstep. In order to create facilities for games at the doorsteps of our students, we immediately built 18 basketball courts, 18 volleyball courts. So every hall of residence now has these facilities. We are very, very fortunate that we now have an AstroTurf hockey ground. It has just been inaugurated. We are the second university in India with an AstroTurf hockey ground. The days of glory on the sports field are back into Aligarh. And I'm glad to say that after 13 years, this year, Aligarh Muslim University won the All India University Tennis Tournament. A day before I came, we won the North Zone Hockey Tournament. And two months before that, our girls won the North Zone Badminton Tournament. So the days when students of Aligarh Muslim University represented their country and won laurels for, for India are back. Another problem area faced by us is the nine schools which Aligarh Muslim University has. All of you are aware that we educate our youngsters right from kindergarten 
till the time they do their PhD. But these schools, which are the feeder institutions of Aligarh Muslim University, had deteriorated. They had gone to sleep. We have got government help, and we have resolved that, inshallah, all our schools will be up to the Kendriya Vidyalaya standards. We selected the weakest school of the lot, that is the Union School, and this year it is going to be up to Kendriya Vidyalaya standards. And we aim to make every one school at least per year up to KB standards. Aligarh Muslim University, unfortunately, is still in the blackboard and chalk stage. We plan to immediately construct a hundred smart classrooms. Why a hundred? So that at least there is one smart classroom per department. We are proud of the fact that we have a hundred departments. Why can't we have a hundred smart classrooms also? We need to upgrade our syllabi. It has remained unchanged for almost 20 or 30 years. I've, we have constituted a team which is re-examining the complete syllabi of the university of all the 300 departments. And within five or six months, we aim to complete this whole process. And by next academic term, we will have syllabi which meet the needs of industry, which meet the needs of our students aspiring to enter the IS and the IFS and central services and also of the armed forces. Uh, <clears throat> I spent 40 years in the army, so that is my area of expertise. And I firmly believe that if we are to strengthen the community, we have to share responsibility for the defense of our country. I have been able to motivate a large number of students to aspire for NDA. I was told that it was a pretty unpopular subject and I thought I would test the waters. So I got in 800 of our 10 plus 2 students, I told them the responsibilities of being true to their salt, true to the country they live in. And I also said that you too have a responsibility responsibility for the security of your country. And I said, if you want a totally secular environment, if you want a job where nobody asks you what you are, then you should not forget that the armed forces also offer a great career. And I'm glad to report that after my motivating lecture to the students, 600 of them opted to try for the National Defense Academy. We could not train all of them, so we selected 50 of the best. We gave them intense training, and I'm happy to report that 10 of them, the first time in the history of, of AMU, have qualified for NDA. As I said before, can you hear me at the back? Yes. 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 Yes.
what is surrender? I will explain what money is surrender. See, we got a capacity of 1,000 teachers. Unfortunately, we only have 1,500 teachers, but we get the fair allowances of 2,000. So the unutilized portion of the budget and for fair allowances of the teachers which are short has to be surrendered back to the government because it cannot be diverted any other purpose. The other funds and for the university, every vessel is utilized, nothing is surrendered. Our non bank grant of 26 crores per year is utilized entirely for taking paying up for our electricity bill. It comes to about 26,000 a year. We therefore plan to make a legal university a green university. We plan to harness solar energy the grid system and by converting it into a green university we will be able to recover our investment of 20 crores and recover it in three years time. We also intend to create the faculty of international studies. We've got to look at the world Faculty, which is a mirror of Aligarh Muslim University. We plan to teach foreign languages. We plan to teach German, French, Hebrew, Turkish, and above all, Chinese. Aligarh Muslim University taught these foreign languages, unfortunately, over a period of time, all these have decayed and the only languages we are teaching now are Persian and Arabic. But we will create under the Faculty of International Studies uh, departments to teach six foreign languages. The problem area, the largest problem is our medical college. As I wrote to the HRD minister when I took over, the medical college reminded me of a dirty railway platform. Yes. And that had to be corrected immediately. The problem area was the grant which we are getting from the government. We were only getting 2.1 crores for our medical college, which is a 1,050 bedded hospital. And I gave comparative figures of what hospitals in Delhi were getting. They were getting a hundred times more than us. We managed to convince the MHRD and our figure of 2.1 crores has been enhanced from last year to 10.5 crores. This will take care to a large extent of the needs of the medical college. We are also examining whether the medical college needs to be shifted to the Ministry of Health. Because MHRD have told me very frankly that 10.5 crores is the maximum we can give you. Now we have to examine whether we want to get under the Ministry of Health. We do not want to repeat the experiment of Banaras Hindu University where they offered the engineering college to become an IIT, but the university has lost total control of the IIT, which is in the campus.
University. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you that I started my education in a madrasa and I'm very proud of that fact. Unfortunately, madrasas are being demonized all over the world. We want to correct that very, very wrong concept of what a madrasa is. The madrasas are the biggest educational network in the country. But unfortunately, they are not giving an all-rounded education to their students. It is mostly Dini tal Talim. What we've done from this academic year is thrown open the doors of Aligarh Muslim University to Madarsa students. Earlier, they were only permitted into the Diniyat, Persian and Arabic, no other courses. We've thrown it open to all courses. I do realize that Madarsa students are ill-equipped to qualify for entry into Aligarh Muslim University. So we have taken corrective action from the end of this month a bridge course for 50 Madarsa uh, students will be started. It will be a one-year course and it will equip the Madarsa students to qualify at least for the humanities, uh, humanities exams. We aim to broaden this, this uh, bridge course and from next year we are examining whether we should have a two-year bridge course so that we, we can equip Madarsa students to qualify probably for science and maybe for the engineering courses. We want to reach out to alumni. I am well aware of your problems. Let me assure you that from next year onwards, all admissions to AMU will be online so that students abroad, students of the NRIs are not handicapped by having to come and apply personally. Also, let me tell you that from this year, all entries to AMU were by a competitive exam. Why did we do this? We did this because a large number of fly-by-night schools were giving certificates to students with 98-99% marks. And those students were getting admitted into AMU. But after admission, we found that those students were totally worthless. They did not deserve the 99 marks they had got in the high schools. So we have corrected that. And this year, I found that the intake of our students is considerably better. We have constituted a committee of alumni affairs. We want to bring all our alumni spread over 90 countries of the world under one overarching umbrella so that we can reach out to them and take their help whenever required. What we want from my alumni, I have said that it is payback time. We want their three T's. Let me elaborate what three T's are. We want your time. We want your talent so that you can come back and teach in AMU. And if you are generous enough, we want your treasures. Because you have earned your treasures. You have earned your treasures because of what you learned at AMU, and it is now payback time. We assure you that next time when you visit AMU, you will breathe 
fresher air you will experience a peaceful intellectual environment we are fixing up not only the potholes of the roads but we are fixing up the potholes in the minds of our students you will be accommodated in clean healthy guest houses which are almost akin to military messes <laughs> ladies and gentlemen aligarh is on the path we are taking a leap forward to catch up and beat the best universities a revolution is underway and i invite you to be part of the renaissance of aligarh muslim university it is only then we will be able to sing in unison jo abar yahan se utha hai wo sare jahan pe barsega thank you very much ladies and gentlemen for giving me this honor i must also say that mr manish shankar ayer told us that he's been to sir sayed days many times he has been invited because i find him a man of courage i find him a person with guts and i find him a person who declares what he has in his heart and let me tell you he is a true secularist thank you very much thank you so much sir uh, from request karenge kya